And um, just for a little background, I do hear from a lot of people out there that they're not ready to start knitting because they think it's just too hard or too complicated to learn. And this is why I created this little mini series along with some videos for you to basically debunk the myth that knitting is hard <laughs> because I really don't think it is. And all you really need to do is follow along um, with some videos and some audio, get your needles, get your yarn and just try it out. And you will be so glad that you did. Um, so today's topic, again, we're talking about how to get stockinette and garter stitches done. And um, they are found in most knitting patterns, actually in every knitting pattern, really. <laughs> they are the, the basic foundational stitches. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to cast off your project. So I have not moved anything since um, I started this little project here on my needles that I've been going by since we first started this little series. And... Um, we're going to just continue with this one right away. All right, so let's set the stage. You still need to make sure that you have the right needle and the right yarn. What I mean by that is you need um, to make sure that the yarn thickness corresponds with you know, the needle size. And we do that because different yarn just requires different sizes of needles in order to um, you know, create um, beautiful patterns, but also um, obtain a certain gauge, which we'll go to go into in another episode. But um, make sure you have yarn and needle size that is indicated on the yarn. It will have it on the little paper that you've got when you first buy the yarn. Okay. Um, casting on, I showed you how to do that, <laughs> along with a little video on YouTube in the episode 13. So you can go back to that one if you need a refresher there. And now we are going to, I'm going to show you the difference between garter stitch and, um, and stockinette. Okay. So here you can see just a little bit of a pattern emerging already from what I knitted before. So right here, you can see these two little kind of like a triangle. Let me use my needle. So when you hold up your pattern, that you've created now. I hope you still have your project from last time. You can now see after a few rows that you um, are creating this little V-shaped, triangle-shaped pattern on the front. And when you flip it around, it almost looks like a little squiggly line, like a little S pattern. So that is what the front and the back look like when you knit the front and purl the back. So. Let me give you a quick refresher what that means. So to knit, we're going to take our yarn in the left hand um, and the, um, the needle that has all the stitches on them also in your left hand. So now again, remember you wrap the yarn around your, um, between your ring finger and your pinky. <laughs> For those of you who watched the video last time, I'm still laughing because I'm like, what's a pinky? I didn't remember the word pinky. It's ridiculous. Anyway, but you guys do know this is not my first language, so I hope I am excused. <laughs> but that was just so funny. When I was like, I'm not stopping the video. I'm just going to figure it out. Anyway, so the yarn goes between your ring finger and your pinky. And after that, you wrap it around your index finger two times. And then we get started. And then we have the right needle in our right hand. And we start by slipping the first stitch. I taught you this in the last one as well. That's my go-to way of getting a nice neat edge on each side, okay? And then we're going to just knit that row. I don't have a lot of stitches on here, so I can do this pretty quickly. So if you just knit every single stitch that is on your needle all the way down, and then when you turn your project, I'm almost there. I got four left, two, actually maybe five, four, five, and this is the last one right here. Okay, so now you have everything on your right needle. Once you're done knitting, you're flipping it around again. You can literally even keep the yarn on your hand if you wanted to. You can take it off and just roll it back on, but nothing really changes. You're just flipping that thing around so that you now see the back side of your knitting. And now you're again holding the, the needle with all your stitches on your left hand. Now from here, we are slipping the first stitch again. Okay, and now we are purling. 
and if you don't remember exactly how to do that go back to last uh to the last episode episode 14 there's a youtube video in there as well and we are purling the entire way trying to speed this up for you guys especially on the audio okay almost done here and now you saw that I purled this back side and I knitted the front okay I am going to turn the audio back on on the podcast okay all done with knitting the front and purling the back and I am showing this on the video now you can watch the video uh, on YouTube the link will be in the show notes you can also hop over into our Mindful Knitting Mamas community on Facebook, which is totally free. And I'm going to show this there again as well and share the video too. So to get over there, you just go to bit.ly slash knitting mamas. It's B-I-T dot L-Y slash knitting mamas. Can't wait to see you in there to show you this in more detail. But now you can see that your front continues in this beautiful um, v-shaped pattern right here and you can easily also count your rows this way let me pull this up a little closer so right here this is your setup row and then you've got one two three so you're now on your fourth row when you row the back side of it again you will see this is row number five <coughs> and if you turn it around you can see that s-shaped kind of a squiggly line those are your um, purl stitches which is exactly the same as a knit stitch except it's done through the back so it's like the opposite if you will but it creates the exact same stitch so I am going to now switch up to what we call garter stitch which is even simpler than stockinette in stockinette as you just learned you're going to need to know knit stitch and you're going to need to know how to purl on the back side I showed you both of those stitches before so it's easy for you to pick up, go back to the video, just go back, go back, go back and keep practicing. You can do this, even if it's a little bumpy in the beginning, just keep going. It's so worth it, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we are going to knit a row again. So for the moment, it's not gonna look any different because obviously we just did this on the V-shaped side we're knitting. Okay, so regular knit stitch, you insert your needle, you grab your yarn, you pull it through, okay? Keeping this up. Now, to create garter stitch, which is really beautiful too. I was just wearing my coat earlier, my um, Cardi coat that I made last year. It's a all garter stitch, um, like medium thickness cardigan, and it is so pretty. I just love it so much. If you guys are... Um, on Instagram, you can go to at the knitting mamas and you can see it right there. Now, when we switch this or flip this over now to the back side, we just knit it again the entire row. But now, instead of purling the back side, what we're going to do is we're going to knit it. So, you're doing the same thing, you're knitting every row and every stitch. So, again, even on the squiggly line side, you're just going to insert your needle in the from the bottom, grab your yarn pull it through and then slip the stitch off okay so let's keep going all the way down and then those of you who are watching the video can actually see this sorry about the noise this is my um, cord from my needle sliding around on this surface right here I apologize for those who are listening just want to make sure you know what that is all right so knit 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 all the way down have a look at video if you want to see how this looks so now it doesn't almost doesn't look very different on the back side but as I turn it around you can now see these little loops right here that are emerging and they are creating the garter stitch so I am going to do a couple more of these while I pause the podcast so that you can see this on the video what it actually going to end up look like and then I have one more little nugget to share with you okay so 
I am going to do one more row here. I'm probably going to speed it up so it's not too boring. Then again, it's not a bad thing to watch this again, especially if you're new to knitting or if you're new to continental knitting, because that's a whole other thing. If you're trying to continental knit where you have been um, knitting a different way, it can be a little tricky at first if you're used to something else, but it doesn't mean that you can't master this. Yeah, you see this right here. It's still happening. All right, and last one. And now you can really start seeing it, right? There it is. And it's such a pretty one too. So here's something really cool. Hang on, let me turn the podcast back on. Okay, so I'm all done showing off the garter stitch. Be sure to catch the video if you really wanna see what it looks like or just start knitting it and then you can also see what it looks like. And um, I was just going to say, um, it's a gorgeous technique to create, like to kind of break up the pattern. So if you're having your stockinette in the bottom and then, you know, you can do one or two rows in garter stitch and then continue with stockinette and it creates this nice line on your pattern. Um, a lot of very simple sweaters are actually knitted that way. And then all they have is these little lines that go through and they just break it up a little bit and just create something really gorgeous. So it's, it's just that simple. Another thing that you can now do, so, since you know both of these stitches, is a ribbing for the bottom, you know, of a sweater or the sleeves, the end of the sleeves right here. Um, oftentimes are knitted in ribbing, which is usually one knit, one purl. It can also be two knit, two purl, but it's just um, alternating these two stitches and it creates um, kind of like a line pattern top down. And what it does, it, uh, it creates a more stretched um, or actually more tight fabric versus this one where it's kind of like the lines are nicely laid out. When you have something that is um, in ribbing, it almost creates like a, I don't even know how to explain this. <laughs> it's like they're pushing together like this, um, which makes sure that the, the ribbing of your sleeve as well as on the body of your sweater are actually just slightly tighter because it creates a better fit. It doesn't happen for every sweater, but you know, it's something that you can do now that you know these two stitches and I'm just so excited for you. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I can't even describe how excited I am for you to get this started. So again, if you're brand new and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Please go over to the video, catch the YouTube video and definitely come into our group, B-I-T dot ly slash knitting mamas come into the group ask your questions watch the videos and please come to the ne next knit and chill circle it's on march 27th can't wait um it'll be i think it's at one o'clock it's around lunchtime um we have it all in the group as well so that you can rsvp there and you can ask your questions there and we can go over anything that you want so i'm super super excited about that and now that you've got the basics down i'm just asking you this what are you waiting for you can start this knitting journey right now. Come into our community. Again, um, hang out with us, us there. And let me just say one more thing. And this might be encouraging to you if you're struggling with any of these things um, and wondering if this is ever going to be something that you do with ease. Every knitter, good or not great, was once a beginner. Every stitch that you may drop, every loop that you miss is a step towards becoming the knitter that you want to be. So I encourage you to embrace the imperfection because it is all part of the journey. Enjoy the process and stop going for perfection because really the process of getting this right is half the fun. You have no idea how many things I have learned since I picked up my needles again in 2020. So it's about four years ago now, and I have learned a ton. I basically was able to do this 
when I first picked them up again after 20-ish years of not knitting. And that's all I had. And I was like, well, cool, what can I make with this? My first, my very first garment after that was a entire cardigan. And it took me quite a while, but it was so fun because <clears throat> I really just wanted to knit again. I did not care about the outcome. <clears throat> I wasn't really, you know, rushing to get it done. I just wanted to knit and I just wanted to enjoy it. And I missed it so much. And I remember how much I loved it. Um, and I really think it's such a great practice to to learn this craft and then eventually get this this accomplishment feeling of accomplishment out of it especially when you're a busy mom who is kind of feeling a little lost to be honest where you know you're just wondering like is this it <laughs> laundry and cooking and disciplining kids and you know all the things we do every day where is something in for me this can be it right here um and I also want you to remember that you're never alone in your knitting journey because I'm here to help you and so are my awesome knitting mamas in our group. And I hope I see you there really soon. Until next time, keep spreading the knitting love and thanks so much for listening. I'll talk to you soon on the Knitting Mamas podcast.